Hi everyone, and I, I'm now going to continue my analysis of my last over the board long tournament, the Reykjavik Open. Uh, I haven't played much chess for years and years, um, COVID, etc. So it was a re really nice to play in a proper proper tournament where I don't have to click the mouse and move the mouse. So I, I missed round one, um, uh, funeral, and uh, uh, round two I managed to win, and in round three. Um, I had the black pieces, so let me just flip the board. And I was playing against a woman grandmaster from the Ukraine, and I apologize if I pronounce the name wrong, F. Genia, um, who, very strong player. Obviously, to be a woman grandmaster, you, you have to be over 2,400 roughly at some point in your career, and um, a dangerous, dangerous attacking player. Uh, it's always I always find it a bit trickier with black, you know. With white, I'm very comfortable generally. But when I have the black pieces, when my opponent plays e4, as my opponent does here, um, I'm not as confident. I'll be honest. I'm all right against d4, but against e4, uh, my openings might need a bit of work. They're a little bit outdated. Uh, I have many different openings I play. I can play the black line, the Sicilian dragon. I can play uh, numerous different stuff. But you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm working so much on other things to keep your level of play up updated. It's very hard work. It requires like you know a lot of uh, attention. I'm too busy doing YouTube videos, or I am now at least. So after this move, and I'm going to be using G Chess to analyze this game, see where I went wrong, share my thoughts of the game. It might be a long video, uh, and again, this is you guys at home. I hope this is, will help you because it will show you basically the way you can analyze games yourself to improve it's very important one of the best ways to get better at chess this is a serious video about trying to help you get better and also show you some of my opening ideas and my thoughts um, so you can think in the correct way okay so I had prepared in the morning and I went for a Sicilian um, I saw that my opponent in this position normally plays the open Sicilian so I, I had certainly got something prepared in the morning for that. I, I, I wasn't totally confident, but uh, I, I was at least a little bit prepared. Uh, and here my opponent played bishop b5 check. Now this is, I don't know about popularity. Um, well, we can actually see on g chess if we, if we just move there and we have a look where well, we can see that, uh, oh, this is my game, so let's just get rid of me. And we can do a little update that we can see um, Okay, I've got many games in this, and look, I'm not scoring well. Uh, I've lost most of my games in this bishop b5 move. So uh, maybe my opponent was targeting this. And here I played the line I always play, knight c6. I think this leads to some of the most interesting positions. Bishop d7 is the safest uh, and leads to quite equal uh, structures. Knight d7 is very popular now but I, again I don't know the theory of this so I just stuck to what I knew knight c6 my opponent castled and now bishop d7 uh, and the idea of this move is uh, of course to avoid the doubling of uh, my pawns um, so my bishop can capture the knight back which which again it makes uh, sense to play this way I'm just adding in uh, the computer, so we might we might want to use the computer later on. And again, like I say, I'm using gchess.com for this. And one thing we've done on gchess, we've got this neural network uh, analysis. So this is very, very deep analysis of all the positions. If it's in the database, you get a very good uh, evaluation of it. My opponent played the normal move here, rook e1. This supports the pawn, and it also gives the bishop the f1 square. So when I attack it with a6, as I, as I did here, uh, my opponent can now bring the bishop back to f1. Again, this is the main line, keeping that bishop for later. Uh, and now I played a bit of a controversial decision. I think the best move here is really to, well, you've got to think what your opponent's trying to achieve uh, when you're playing chess and what you're trying to achieve. Stop your opponent, try to achieve your own goals. So I want to complete my development here. And quite importantly, my pawns and pieces, my knight, are all pointing towards these two central squares. And, and these are the two central squares which 
I, I really want to control and I want to finish my development so I'd like to play something like g6 bishop g7 because then my bishop helps control that and then I think about where to move my knight and castles and then we're in the middle game but if you play g6 too soon here my opponent can play the standard idea here and that is c3 trying to build up two pawns in the center and it's quite hard to stop this now for example I go bishop to g7 and the pawn comes here and this is something you should avoid you don't really want your opponent to get two pawns like that I'm just gonna be a little bit worse here so we have to like you know try to do our own plans but as I say stop our opponents plans now the move I played I was going for a particular very risky idea which I don't know it's maybe a bit too risky but the main move and I think a very good move here is to go bishop g4 and I have played this move before once uh, actually I lost to Mickey Adams in this but the idea of this is yes you give up your bishop but for the knight that's okay in, in a lot of cases but the important thing is that white knight is controlling the central square so we're just fighting for the center and the idea is that you know we can take this knight off at, at some point and, and this gives us better fight in the middle and now if white plays this move we can change our setup and we can actually we can't stop d4 but we can go now for a french defense kind of thing and i like the french defense anyway so for example if d4 is, is played at some point we can go d5 and our bishop is outside of the pawn structure so this is quite nice anyway let's get back to the game because it gets interesting but i played e5 with a particular idea in mind so i am stopping this my opponent now played the best move trying to prepare this and my idea was this incredibly risky move g5 I, I, I've played this kind of setup for a long long time the computer as you can see hates it it thinks it's nearly losing I realize this and to be honest this was a bloody stupid decision this is the kind of move you can play in blitz chess the kind of move you can play on the line but when you're playing in a, an international tournament where there's one game a day playing this against the woman GM is crazy because I know it's a bit dubious and I can only expect that my opponent has prepared something against this and done some work on a computer. So I'm just walking into preparation. So it's a really quite a stupid decision that I, I made here. Now, I, 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 it, it's got two ideas. The main one, you're still fighting for the center because I want to play g4, force that knight away and gain control of the center. I also want to get some kind of kingside attack, but it's very, very loosening and white can open up the center anyway. So the game now continued with my opponent, I think being well prepared here. So this is another reason it's bad by playing the logical move, meeting a wing attack with an attack in the center, D4. Um, I now continued with G4, this has to be the idea. And now, well, if the knight comes back, at least I win a pawn. I don't think that's even that clear because I have, where's my king gonna go? It's weak. But d5, as we can see, is the computer's main choice. And already I felt like maybe I, I, I've walking straight into it. My opponent's playing very quickly here. And I generally don't think this position is bad as what the computer says. And I do think it's playable. But I was just very fearful because my opponent's speed to play. I'm like, oh, I've walked into preparation. And I actually think here, I played the knight to e7 because it looked right to try and bring it around to the king side where I'm really going to try to attack but I was also thinking maybe a better idea is the very peculiar move knight to a7 this could be my novelty for the future I've just given it away now so let's hope my future opponents aren't preparing I'm going to put the computer on and it doesn't think that's this this is that bad and I was thinking this is in the game now this knight looks bloody stupid here right but it has some advantages. Number one, I'm controlling this diagonal with my queen. I'm not blocking it by the knight. And number two, this knight, a, a main idea, again, we've got to think what opponent's trying to achieve. A main idea that white does is get a pawn here and a knight here, and then try to come into this square. And by putting the knight here, I can sometimes bring it back to c8 and just try and cover this queen side of mine. So I'm trying to hold up the queen side with this move, and I know it's very passive, but it is a defensive piece, and I'm just gonna to try to attack over here. So this is a very interesting new novelty 
in this position if you want to play this line. If we go back to the game, I'll turn the computer off for now, I move my knight back here and my opponent played a very interesting move. I think knight d2 is, is a good move, but knight h4 was what my opponent played. I also think this is actually a more dynamic and scary move. And the reason for this is that my opponent is just trying to kill me and trying to sacrifice with a knight coming into f5 immediately sacrificing a pawn now originally i thought this was a blunder because i thought oh i can win a pawn and i looked at what layla's giving us the top line here and that is knight takes pawn but i suddenly I, I really did not like my position here at all and the move that scared me the most was knight to f5 and this leads to a forcing line i have to take that knight my opponent takes back and my opponent has this play on two open lines against my king. The bishop is also coming in to c4. And even though the computer, as we see, didn't think it's that bad for black, I'm really on the defensive here, and it's not the way I like playing. Maybe this is playable. I'd like to run this position a lot longer and at a longer depth here than we're using in the video. But I wouldn't go into this. It, I, I, you have to use your own judgment and the computer's judgment. It doesn't look nice to me. So I played another idea here, and the other idea I could see was, okay, this knight is misplaced. I need to develop my pieces. How about I try to attack it with my bishop, which helps me control my center a bit more. So I played bishop g7 with the one idea of coming to this square. And the point is, if my opponent now sacrifices here, I'm not as scared because when I win that pawn, you can see that this pawn is in the way of those open lines in the middle towards my position and I think I'm doing very well here I can develop my knight and castle I'm a pawn up so my opponent played another what I feel is a very good move and that was f4 and I have to say with after this move again even if the computer doesn't highly agree it thinks I'm doing okay I, I was really scared because I'm getting attacked with my king in the middle I don't, again, I don't think it's that bad, but I just didn't feel comfortable here. Now, the problem is I want to try and take this one, ideally, but then after bishop f4, I would love to, and again, you can see the computer really doesn't like the position, I'd love to play knight to g6. And this is would be perfect if I can get control of this outpost in the middle with a piece. But there's some line where my opponent just takes it and takes on d6. And I just didn't think I have enough counterplay here. The computer's actually giving a very interesting move there where I get some counterplay, which I have to admit I missed. Um, but it doesn't feel right to me. I mean, it's giving, it's giving some very dodgy line here. Now it's saying white's a lot better. So this is why I, I didn't want to play this particular line. I'm turning the computer on and off where I feel needed. So I continued with bishop f6. And now my opponent's idea, knight to f5, sacrificing a pawn to, um, to basically uh, uh, gain open files towards my king. So I now take that one off. I have no choice. I've got to grab the pawn. And here my opponent played, has a couple of interesting options. The computer thinks there's plenty of play here. I mean, obviously, if I can move my knight and castle, I think I'm okay. My knight will generally head to g6 to defend these two squares. So my opponent has to move a bit quickly and she played the best move, knight d2. I continue with the best move, knight e7. And here the computer gives pawn takes pawn. But I think the way she played it was also all right. She played knight c4. I'm still a bit worried here. And now my opponent is threatening to open up the position. So I have to keep it closed with my king in the middle. So I now try to keep the lines closed with this one. My opponent plays knight e3. This is all very normal, attacking my bishop. And now queen d7. And I think I've done a good job of keeping the position closed here, getting developed and getting ready to castle. But the key position comes after knight takes here. I have to take with the queen. And again, if I get one more move, I castle. I'm doing okay, even if I lose this pawn. My opponent plays the best move, check. I'd like to play b5, but bishop takes b5 as a good move on my rook. So I have to move my king. But now, after the next move, I, I, I was so amazed. This is the key moment. And what you'll find in games of chess is, often there's only one or two key moments, turning points. Everything up to this point has been pretty natural. My opponents played very aggressively. 
I've defended pretty well. I've kept the position closed. I've developed my pieces. And now my opponent can certainly try to win this pawn back with the two bishops and a very unclear game. But it's at this moment where the game totally totally changes in, in, in my way. My opponent now played queen takes e4. And I think clearly this is a mistake. I was very, very happy to see this. The reason, the reason is, well, I think I can pretty much safely win a pawn, but the exchange of queens helps me. Because if we go back, whose king is safer? Well, it might look like white's king is in danger, but I can't really ever get to it. You know, if I ever push a pawn, my opponent moves the other pawn and keeps it blocked. My king feels a lot more unsecure. It has to come to g7. Maybe it feels safe there. But if my opponent can ever get rid of this pawn and use the bishop on this diagonal, I don't like it. So the key point, and if we put Layla on, well, Layla thinks that queen takes e4 works. The key move I was worried about, maybe I missed a tactic here, was rook takes e4. Now, the computer thinks I'm doing well here. So this could have been a misevaluation, but I just think in principle, everything's been pretty logical up to this point. I think I've played pretty well, but even if this does lose a pawn for white, I'm not convinced it's a whole pawn advantage. Let's just play the computer variation. So of course I saw b5 as playable. And now, well, what happens if bishop takes b5 is the first question. Well, the point is this loses now to pawn takes, queen takes check, king here, and I'm attacking the queen and I'm attacking the rook. So I win lots of material. So my opponent has to come back queen c2. And now the computer's giving king g7. Now, I mean, this, I mean, the computer's now giving, I think, yeah, it's changing its assessment a little bit. It's given bishop d3, and it's given queen takes d5. I don't know. I mean, this just scared me quite a lot, this position. And you can see it's not as much as a pawn now, and this may well change your valuation. I mean, the thing is, when you got, when even maybe white has gone wrong somewhere, but even if you don't like your position, you've got to play the most practical moves in a human versus human game. And I think at least keeping the queens on here is practically much more scary for me. This bishop just feels like it could be very dangerous at some point. Maybe I am safe here. Maybe I was getting too worried. But I still think this was a bit of a turning point. Because if we go back to the game, after the queens come off, which is actually the computer's top move, well, I just take the queen, I take on d5. And without the queens on the board, it feels rather just like a safe pawn for me. I've got to convert this game, which is not easy. It's not easy ever to convert a victory. But... I'm very happy here. My king is nice. My knight is okay. I have a queenside majority. My bishop is good. Things are looking good here. And the computer, well, it, it, it just giving normal moves here. So let's just see how the game develops and get to the next critical moment. So, okay, so I get my king connecting the rooks to a better square. My opponent goes for the open file, but that, that doesn't really help her because there's no entrance points for the rooks. I improve my position by defending my pawn here that pawn could have been weak in some lines after my opponent pushes in it feels a very natural thing to do maybe these pawns can be dangerous later on and now i'm in no immediate danger um bishop d3 played trying to get the bishop to batter square and now i've got to think of a plan so even when you're material up what plan should you be thinking of in such a position this is a key moment maybe have a little think yourself here what should you be doing you're a pawn up what is critical maybe pause if you need to it's a, it's a middle game position. I think I came up with a good plan. I mean, ideally, when you're a pawn up, exchanges help. But you shouldn't always just go looking for exchanges if it makes your position a little bit worse. What you need to do is keep trying to improve on area of the boards your strongest. Maybe you should, you've should got to look where you have the pawn majority, where your pieces are better placed. And here, well, I won the pawn on the queen side, so I have four pawns versus three. So... The natural idea would be in an ending to try and use my four pawns to get a pass pawn and eventually win the game by queening. So I want to try to mobilize these pawns. And also here it works very well because this bishop is actually a fantastic piece. It's blocked by this pawn at the moment but if I can get rid of this pawn my bishop improves drastically. My knight is also quite good. It's in the center of the board 
I can always hop back if need be. It's a very nice piece. I mean, knight c7 and trying to swap rooks off, I feel is a little bit too soon. We don't need to do that. My opponent's rook's not doing anything. And also, we can work out my opponent is not actually doing anything. So I have time to play b5. This is a key good move in the position. I'm now getting ready to play c4 or b4, use those pawns. So my opponent breaks with c4. I simply take this one and now in this position I play knight to b6 and we can see that my pawns are starting to come. I have a passed d pawn, my bishop has improved so things are going very well here. Bishop f1, don't want to lose that bishop and now my pawn starts to come forwards. Now there was a moment, I'm trying to rem remember it now, around here that after b5, c4 and bishop takes here, I'm just trying to think what I was most scared of in, in, in some of these lines, but I think I don't think there was anything too scary. So let's get on with the game. Okay, so here, and now when well, it's just using these pawns to slowly go up the board. So c4, and this also kills the range of my opponent's pieces. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to use these pawns, but at the same time stifle my opponent's pieces. So I'm not rushing their advance. Bishop a5, quite a good move. But my rook improves, rook d2, trying to take my knight, take my pawn. And here I play rook c8 because if my opponent does take the knight, my rook comes to b2. So I'm just improving all my pieces. Rook c1 and now rook c5, just asking my opponent the question, what are you going to do with that bishop? I'm trying to kick away my opponent's best pieces. b4, I think... I was a little bit more worried about my opponent just asking my rook the question here because after b4 suddenly I have these two pawns and this c pawn is now advanced and look at the bishop the bishop is killed so I just step back again if my opponent takes the knight my rook comes to b4 my bishop is so strong so a3 and now c3 pushing as far forward as I can yes I unleash the bishop but my pawns are becoming too strong. Rook d1, and now a key move here, in actual fact. I, my opponent's very short of time, and I was getting a bit short of time, a bit rusty, and it's, again, you've got a good position, but how do you convert these positions into wins? Because you have to break through. And sometimes you have to transform the position, and here, knight c4 is a very good transformation, because I, I'm, I'm simply gonna use this knight and use my pawn and my basic idea is put the pawn on c2 put the bishop on b2 win and I'm also aiming to exchange pieces off simplifying my position and after bishop takes c4 that knight was too strong rook takes c4 yes I'm giving my opponent this pawn but because of b4 my opponent's bishop is now stuck out of the game and I have a very simple plan c2 bishop b2 and I've exchanged off more material my opponent now played rook to c2 i thought again you've got to always look at improving your pieces i thought that my rook here is not doing anything now that is just looking at the pawn so i move it to the open file threatening in some cases to come in for example if my opponent takes this pawn that would certainly be an option and my opponent very logically and this is a sign of a good player tries to get the bishop back in the game i take another pawn why why not my king is very safe and now if my opponent takes here i have back rank checkmate g3 and now i just drop back because there's no point losing that pawn and two pawns up i still need to be careful the rook uh, the bishop comes back and now i want to play d4 so how do i secure that square i use my rook to guard the d4 square and that means this pawn's coming up and i'm constantly making sure my opponent has no active moves here the rook comes to d3 and well, I like my next move. It's showing domination. I'm realizing that my opponent's not threatening anything here. There's nothing I can worry about. Even pushing the A pawn loses another pawn. So I just improve my king slowly. Why not? My king might come in this way. I'm showing I'm in uh, complete command of the position. The king comes to G2. And now I get my rook. It's done its job behind the pass pawn. And I'm just again improving my pieces. The white king is not going anywhere. And after the bishop comes to this square, I go d4. And my next idea is to move this rook, bring my king to break the blockade on the light squares, 
or if I want to forcibly do that I can go rook f3 yes I lose a pawn but I get rid of this blockader and this pawn will come and of course I'm just queening my guys here so uh, all in all a very interesting game I think I played all right there actually uh, from an opening I was quite uncomfortable with I mean if we just have a look um, again let's just have a look on the computer uh, G chess and again do like this video and please subscribe to the channel it does help a lot I'm going to be doing these every Friday just showing my games in the tournament I know they're maybe not as entertaining as some of the other things I do but I think they're a good insight how you should prepare how you should learn from the games you've played in tournaments uh, and and opening insights so I'm gonna you know for example just have a look at the opening again because uh, one thing I feel is and I'm using G chess for this is that this e5 and g5 idea it might be playable but let's think honestly if I'm playing in a big competition and I keep playing this same line which the computer after g5 gives as minus one I've really got to be confident and there might be a position let's say where I'm playing someone like 2100 you know if I don't if I just play normal chess I should be able to outplay them why am I risking it by playing a very risky opening? This is the kind of opening I should be playing against like 2600s because, okay, they might outplay me, you know. So uh, I'm a grandmaster, but they're a higher grandmaster. So I should maybe take more risks against them. So one thing I'm thinking here is I need an alternative to this idea of e5 and g5. I'm quite happy getting this position. And I feel that in the future, bishop g4 trying to play more positionally just trying to control these squares without playing this weakening move would be a very good alternative to have so if I use G chess I can have a look over here and I can have a look Daniel Narodichsky has played this line uh, a couple of times so I can check his games out I can also have a look on Lee chess see what's happened there check the top games out but the, the thing I find the most useful on G chess is this little one here at the top follow my mouse here you might see it and this is the article one so if you're signed up to the articles you will find we have new in chess articles chess publishing I think chess publishing is, is one of the most uh, brilliant resources for real if you really want to improve out there and if I click on the chess publishing tab it will basically show any annotated games by grandmasters in this position and there's two annotated games of Bishop g4 so all I have to do is click that. It will bring up the two games. The annotator is International Master Sam Collins and International Master uh, Vigorito, very good theoreticians. And we can see we have two games here and I'm just gonna click on them and it will bring it up on the main board here. Uh, let's flip the board. And I'm just gonna see how to play this. And after H3, I would now be taking on f3 here I, I i lost the game to mickey where i played my bishop back here so i wouldn't be doing that and after bishop takes f3 which is the notes queen takes g6 this is as the analysis says a very reliable way to equalize i've got very nice development yes i've given up my bishop but look after the bishop goes here i just need to develop my last piece either this way to control those dark squares more or in some cases I might go e6 and bring it here but I'm very happy playing this position and just getting into an equal middle game so that's interesting to see and if we go back to bishop g4 what's the shear off game well I remember commentating on this and we see that d3 is another option that white can play I mean I was talking about c3 earlier but after d3 well let's have a look shear off playing knight f6 okay because there's no threat of d4 so we can develop normally knight bd2 and now this french defense set up with e6 which i very much like because i like the french defense and the idea at some point is just to play d5 but the bishop is outside the pawn structure i already like this position and after h3 now taking here doesn't make as much sense because white's pieces are good so i like the idea of retreating okay c3 trying to go for d4 bishop e7 developing Okay, this move I love seeing because it weakens my opponent's king. I'm not weakening my own king this time. And after knight here, knight here, knight g2, now Shirov played h5 and he went on to lose the game. But we can see here that the recommended move 
in this position is e5 trying to hold up this move and this position looks great for black to me I mean it's probably fine for white but it's the kind of position I like playing I might better play h5 next I might better castle queenside it's still very exciting but I haven't taken as many risks so this is generally uh, the way and again I can just bring up my PGN here back to my game this is generally the way that I I look at my games uh, and you can also now there's a little little thing here if you want to uh, and I can use the computer and the computer will go through all the moves here and find out moves that are mistakes um, moves that it likes so you can you know you can automatically you know put your PGNs that you play in competitions into G chess find improvements find other opening articles and not just computer articles I think G chess is one of the only maybe the only site where you get grandmaster written explanations of your ideas uh, which I think is brilliant uh, and use this as a resource for future and I know now that maybe this e5 move let's just see let's just see if there's anything on this g5 move am I the only person who's played it well we'll have a quick look at the games here and if we go to here I'll look look at the only people who have played it online ginger gm ginger gm not a very good score okay Gwen Jones has played it and I've had a couple of victories so you know it's my blitz repertoire if we go on chess.com our oh, Duboff has played it well there you go Duboff and me let's have a look at Duboff's game so Duboff's game went d4 how did he play it and it went here he played like me he moved the knight to this square and this is interesting okay so Duboff's opponent didn't go here he moved the knight to g6 so maybe Duboff has a bit of faith in this maybe it is playable but you remember when I said put the knight on a7 one of the issues was this idea. Let's have a look. Very interesting. And it seems like Duboff has pretty good position here, actually. I mean, he's getting all his pieces developed. And, it, yeah, okay, he's... Well, I don't know what the hell's going on there. Let's just, <laughs> that's too much for me. Okay, so I learned a lot there. That was my round three game. So that took me up after a buy in round one. I won the next two games. So I'm on two and a half out of three. Uh, and I'm going into round four and um, I'm guaranteed to get a very tough opponent on my score group of two and a half points out of three in the Reykjavik Open. Maybe I even have dreams of winning this big tournament which has something like 30 Grandmasters playing. You never know. So I'll bring out the next video on this, I, I believe, hopefully next Friday. Cheers. Bye.